Hello everyone, my name is Sam, aka Complete Freedom. In this video series, I will be reviewing the commercial ACS for airplane single engine land and breaking down each area of operation task by task. The goal of this series is to provide short videos reviewing each task so that anyone who may be struggling with a particular task can quickly find that video and learn where to look for answers for the task. If you find this video helpful and would like to see more content like this, Leave a like on this video and consider subscribing. In today's video, we'll be covering commercial airplane, pre-flight preparation, pilot qualification, knowledge element, K2, privileges and limitations. We'll be looking at FARS 61.133 and 61.119, and we'll also be looking at Advisory Circular 120-12A. FAR 61.133 covers commercial pilot privileges and limitation and states that a person who holds a commercial pilot certificate may act as pilot in command of an aircraft carrying persons or property for compensation or hire, provided the person is qualified in accordance with this part and with the applicable parts of this chapter that apply to the operation. We'll be covering the applicable parts of this chapter later in the video. In section two, it says, states that a, a person holding the commercial pilot certificate may act as pilot in command of an aircraft for compensation or hire, provided that the person is qualified in accordance with this part and with applicable parts of this chapter that apply to the operation. The commercial pilot limitations state that a person applying for a commercial pilot certificate, if you do not have an instrument rating in the same category and class, will be issued a commercial pilot certificate that contains limitations. The carriage of passengers for hire in airplanes, powered lifts, on cross-country flights in excess of 50 nautical miles or at night is prohibited. Basically, you cannot carry passengers in excess of 50 nautical miles or at night. Notice that it only specifies passengers and not property. It goes on to say that the limitation may be removed when the person satisfactorily accomplishes the requirements listed in FAR 61.65, which covers your instrument rating. If you're finding this information useful, smash that thumbs up button below and leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you'd like to see in an upcoming video. And also subscribe to the channel for more content. As I stated earlier, FAR 61.133 in the privileges section stated that a person may act as a pilot in command when carrying persons or property for compensation or hire provided the person is qualified in accordance with this part, which means part 61, and with the applicable parts of this chapter that apply to the operation. The applicable chapter is chapter one, so title 14, chapter one. The subchapter that you wanna look at most closely is gonna be subchapter G, air carriers and operators for compensation or hire, certification and operation. That covers the certification of air carriers and operations. And within that subchapter, part 119 covers certification of air carriers and commercial operators. It is applicable to each person operating or intended to operate civil aircraft as an air carrier or commercial operator or both in air commerce or when common carriage is not involved in operations of US registered airplanes with a seat configuration of 20 or more passengers or a maximum payload capacity of 6,000 pounds or more. However, if you notice down in section E, this part being part 119 up here, this part does not apply to student instruction, nonstop commercial air tours that begin and end at the same airport and are conducted within 25 statute mile radius of that airport in compliance with the letter of authorization. So you must get a letter of authorization stating that you can uh, conduct the tours within 25 statute miles and you must operate within, the, within that letter of authorization. It does not apply to uh, ferry or training flights, aerial work including crop dusting, banner towing, aerial photography or survey, firefighting, power line or pipeline patrol, and also nonstop flights conducted within 25 statute miles for parachute operations. And finally, I want to point out Advisory Circular 120-12A, which covers private carriage versus common carriage of persons or property. The whole purpose of this Advisory Circular is to point out that common carriage and private carriage are common law terms, but the Federal Aviation Act of 1958 uses the term common carriage but does not define it. So the guidelines for this Advisory circular states that a carrier becomes a common carrier when it holds itself out to the public or to a segment of the public as willing to furnish transportation within the limits of its facilities to any person who wants it. In other words, a carrier becomes a common carrier when it advertises itself. 
There are four elements in defining common carrier, one being a holding out or advertising of a willingness to transport persons or property from place to place for compensation. I also wanted to point out that carriage for hire, which does not involve holding out, is private carriage. Private, carri private carriers for hire are sometimes called contract carriers. Private carriage for hire is carriage for one or several selected customers, generally on a long-term basis. So if you know someone who owns an aircraft and would like to hire you to fly them around in their airplane, you're permitted to do so with your commercial certificate. There are too many scenarios to cover in this lesson. If you have a question about whether a certain situation involves common carriage or private carriage, I would advise you to talk this over with your certified flight instructor and or a designated pilot examiner to cover your specific situation. The intent of these videos are to show you where to find information that you cannot get straight from the Airman Certification Standard for the Commercial Pilot. In the next video, we'll be covering Nodge Element K3 Medical Certificates. We'll discuss the class expiration privileges and temporary disqualifications. If you found this information useful, please like the video and leave a comment below. Also, subscribe to the channel and share this video with anyone who may find this content useful. Thank you for watching.